Uh, so what we're going to look at is um, placing. Uh, sorry about the squeaky chair. We're going to look at uh, exporting um, a logic project as a MIDI file. Um, a MIDI file that can be transferred onto any other system anywhere um, and load up the sounds or similar sounds to the, the that that you use within your project in Logic. Um, this is actually uh, a bit more tricky than initially seems. Um, people think you can just sequence MIDI a MIDI project in Logic and then export it as, a, as an, um, a MIDI file and then load it up in anything. It doesn't work like that. What you'll inevitably find if you did that is that your MIDI would be there, but all your instrumentation would just be um, default to a piano. So all your drums, your bass, anything you put into the project would just sound like a piano. So you need to tweak a few things in your Logic project uh, in your sequence before you're able to actually export as a, as a general MIDI file that could be used elsewhere. So I've got a little song here um, for demonstration purposes. Uh, we have piano, an upright bass and a drum kit. Sounds like this. It's not particularly great, but have a listen. Okay, so just a very simple uh, little chord pattern with some bass and some drums. What I've deliberately done here is I've created an alias of this region, uh, a little bit like a copy, just, just to sort of demonstrate if you have got aliases, um, what you need to do with them, uh, and more commonly uh, used, I suppose, is the, um, the, the loop function as well. I've looped this region here. Um, the reason for that is before you export a MIDI file, you need to make sure that all these kind of loops and aliases and stuff are converted into one solid merged region, as we can see here with the piano. So that's the first thing that I would uh, do, is uh, select anything like a, an alias track, go to the MIDI drop down menu, and we can see alias option, um, convert to region copy. Okay, um, with the loops, if you select the region with the loops, go to the region drop down menu, loops, convert to real copies. Okay, so they become real things that could be edited. Next thing to do is to merge them together. We don't want to merge all of this together onto one track, but we do want to merge these two regions together and these two regions together. You can do that quickly, you don't have to do that individually. You can select all of your uh, regions on a track, or your separated regions, and you just go to the region drop down menu, merge, and regions per tracks. Okay, so that's uh, all the, the MIDI stuff sort of tidied up. You'll notice as well I've quantized um, the uh, drums and the bass and the piano. And we want to sort of make that quantization appear as well um, when we export the, the MIDI track. If we don't sort of fix it destructively, then it will just go back to free time um, and sound out of time depending on how terrible you are at playing. Uh, so you need to select your regions. Go to your MIDI drop down menu again if you go onto region parameters and apply quantization settings destructively. Uh, it's also worth um, normalizing any region parameters, and uh, that's cool. Okay, so to s export this so it plays back with sounds that are similar to what we have here, um, we need to apply some program changes. To these regions um, and we need to make sure they're all on different channels and the best way to sort of look at MIDI information is to click on the list option up here and make sure you've got the event tab selected and you can see when I select a region it gives me all the information about the notes that are played within that particular region it tells me that there are note messages in there that it's on channel number one uh, it tells me the value uh, velocity of those notes and when they start and end. Um, so you just go through, you can select your region and it will give you all that information. What you'll notice here, channel one, if I click on my different instruments, channel one, channel one, they're all assigned to channel one. That's no good. Um, they need to be on separate channels, each instrument. 
uh, it defaults all to one single channel when you're in Logic. You need to, you're exporting as general MIDI, you need to assign each instrument to a different MIDI channel. Uh, there's probably something in the preferences where you can globally change that to do that sort of automatically. But mine's set up so they're all on the same thing. So if I was to export this, it would all sound like a piano. The drums would sound like a piano, the bass would sound like a piano, the piano would sound like a piano. So um, in order to hear different instruments, you need to choose a different MIDI channel. And you've got up to 16 MIDI channels, so you could have a 16 track sequence exported as general MIDI. Um, it is a sort of multi tombral format, if you like. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, let's change the channels first of all. It's very easy to do. I'm going to leave uh, um, my piano on channel one. I'm going to choose channel two for the bass. Uh, to do this, I'm just command and A, selecting all the notes within the event list. And I'm literally just going to click on my mouse and drag up to assign that to channel two. Drum kit, well, if you know anything about general MIDI, you'll know that drum kit needs to be assigned to MIDI channel number 10 in order to be heard as a drum kit. So that's the default channel for drums. Um, just to make sure your sounds are right when they load up, you need to load up a, you need to put in a program change. There's 128 possible instruments for general MIDI. Um, if you're unsure what they are, then Google um, general MIDI patch numbers and you will find a list similar to this one here and I can see here that my grand piano or if I wanted a bright piano we're looking at zero or program number one so let's insert a program change right at the very beginning of the track so to do this select the first note on the event list make sure that you have not the filter option on but the create option and select program change we can change the number value here uh, to zero, that's fine, and value, well, I'm going to choose zero, which is a grand piano. Okay, so that now, you can sort of see that this little white thing uh, here is, is popped up, indicating that there's a little program change in there, which will assign this instrument straight away to a grand piano. I'm going to do the same for the bass guitar. If I go back and have a look at bass patches, here we go, we've got some acoustic electric basses. I suppose one that's closest to the upright bass would be an acoustic bass. So I'm going to choose program number 32. Choose the region, create the program change, and I'm going to choose program 32. Okay, next thing to do, uh, just is uh, you don't need to put a program changing for drums because it's just a standard drum kit on general MIDI you don't have that much choice uh, make sure you've saved your project save as save your project somewhere I've called it test you need to do that otherwise you can't export MIDI um, files correctly which is something that I just found out and I had to remake the video for it didn't look stupid so, uh, to export your MIDI file, go to File and go to uh, Export. It's, you've got this option here, Export Selection as MIDI File. Well, we actually want our selection to be more than just the piano, we want it to be all the instruments. So, File, Export Selection as MIDI File. I'm just going to pop it on the desktop and call it Song 1. And this will export it as a MIDI file, hopefully. So hit save, does it very, very quickly. We'll go and have a look on my desktop now and let's get rid of some of these things. You can see there, there we are, there's my MIDI file. Obviously, got the .mid extension. Uh, let's have a listen to it and hear that if it has got the right sounds. So what you'll notice there is the sounds are slightly different to what you had originally um, because uh, you're using general MIDI, you're using general MIDI sound set that exists on this computer. If we go back, just have a quick listen to the uh, MIDI version. Okay, we go back to the original in Logic. You can hear.
hear the difference there. But this is the restriction, this is the limitation with general MIDI. General MIDI has got its own set of sounds, um, and when you're in your logic project, you just need to choose something by assigning a channel and assigning a program change, um, something that's as close as possible to what you have uh, in your project. Okay, so um, that is exporting a, a MIDI file correctly. You'll find that when you uh, start a new project and try and import the MIDI file, Logic will pick it up straight away. Uh, it's called a Type 1 MIDI file um, and it will reassign all the instruments for you to uh, to a certain um, software instrument. Uh, I'll just demonstrate that very, very quickly. Um, you may lose my voice here for a second, but let's just give this a go. Okay, so not quite sure why the uh, piano didn't import there correctly, but um, you can see how that it identified the MIDI track as a type on MIDI file and did assign the three tracks again to uh, well, almost correct sounds there. Uh, I'll need to have a look into that in a little detail. But that is how you export uh, MIDI so it can be used um, in other, other systems elsewhere and you can take your sequence anywhere. Okay, that's it.